My name is Sean Murphy. Uh, our company is Hollyhock Construction, and we do custom homes and renovations, primarily with ICF construction. My background in construction goes pretty far. Uh, my dad's an engineer, and my mom was a home builder, turned into a teacher, back into home builder, because my grandpa was a home builder back in Ethelbert, which is northern Manitoba community. So pretty deep into the, the family were builders at heart. Uh, for us, pretty standard, usually for an exterior finish, we're looking at a hardy siding, which is a fiber cement siding that does fire rating and soundproofing, and it's crazy durable. With the Logix ICF, your studding is every eight inches on center, so you can put any type of finish externally or internally. You can even put vinyl siding on it. You can put an exterior rain screen on your ICF. On the inside, you could even put metal siding in the garage, pretty much anything, because that webbing is every eight inches, so very versatile and flexible. It's pretty cool. Uh, AMC Foam is really community driven, like they want to help support the everybody from top down, architects, engineers, installers, uh, builders alike, because if they can get them informed and educated, I think it provides a, a better experience for, for everybody involved because it's a pretty technical product, right? You want to have that onboarding of education, get them understanding what they're building and drawing, and then it just cycles down. So I'd say AMC is a really community driven that helps support its builders and architects. When we design with ICF and when I see other builders design with ICF, I think successful projects have provided a lot of pre-planning. They got integrated project delivery, which is the architects and the builders and owners. So all the major stakeholders in the room so that the expectations set from the beginning on what, what they're building with. It's an engineer product, so it has constraints, but also flexibilities. So when you're building with an ICF, if you do the pre-planning like anything else, uh, I think you have really successful projects. So. Get everybody on board early and you'll have a great build. So when you're planning an ICF building, I would look at the block itself. That's what you're building around. So we have a 16 inch block and we have a 12 inch block. And those heights allow us to you know, provide a final building elevation we can go back from. And then at that point, we look at where we put our windows and doors that can go in a nice stack schedule. So we're doing less cutting on site and being proficient. Because being efficient allows us to build a little bit quicker, keeps the cost down for everybody and provides a really good product. Our value is basically the resistance of a product or material that you're using in a building and allows us to calculate the wall assembly. Uh, there's a lot of components that are add to the R value um, or RSI calculation that we're looking at. So a standard 16-inch uh, Logix block, we're looking at R25 approximately when you add up all the control layers, which is actually a, a really interesting number because behind that, there's thermal break questions. With ICF construction, you're, you're, you're building a product that has full uh, continuous insulation and it's a thermally broken product. So there's no connection between, traditionally where you have like a stud frame wall, that two by four, two by six conducts heat and cold right through that stud. With an ICF build, there's basically zero transfer of cold and heat. So we take an infrared camera and look at a building. It's just cold or hot, depending on the ambient out outdoor temperature. So it's a, uh, tons of technology built into it in engineering. The energy efficiency of an ICF block basically boosts the house. It brings it up to what we're looking for with new energy codes going forward, honestly, uh, because it allows for a, a true R25, we'll call it at the end of the day, which is really unique because it's a traditional assembly. When we say an R20 wall, it's calculation with thermal bridging is way less, like a 13, don't reference that one, but it's a lot less than what we say when we do an R20 wall with that insulation. With an R24 ICF, it's a true 24 because it's continuous insulation. There's no thermal break in there. Um, transfer, it's a full thermal break. Um, key advantages with ICF is it allows us to consolidate a lot of sub trades to one. So when you're building with ICF, it's really doing five, six main key components in a building wall assembly. It's the control layer for weather. It is the insulation. It's the framing, technically, we'll call it studding. So you don't have to do framing later. It's the insulation, uh, the forming, and then vapor barrier because the dew point is in the center of the wall. So we actually don't need to do a vapor barrier on the inside of the building because concrete at six inches is by passive health standards considered a vapor barrier. So it consolidates a lot of value into one assembly. Yes, the challenges of ICF uh, probably is a top-down issue. 
we really need to get architects and builders and engineers involved at the very beginning. Those challenges can be reduced pretty much to like zero on site if it's drawn and planned properly from the very beginning. Maybe it's just a new technique for some builders and installers, but once they've worked with the product, they pick it up pretty quickly. So if it's designed properly, we're building on site as per, let's say, the manufacturer spec, it goes flawlessly, honestly.